Okay, all right. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to 30 minute uh, mini training session with um, Adiwali Yusuf. Today, I'll be giving you some tips on uh, some Excel functions that you really need to change the way you work. So I call them top 10 Excel uh, formulas that will change um, the way you work. So I'll not spend much time. They are just 10 um, Excel functions. We just look at different scenarios of how you can use um, all these functions that we've mentioned. So these are the functions that I listed on my screen. The first one for me is text before and after, then the text split, the sequence, choose calls, V stack, H stack, two calls plus two row, take, drop, and filter. So for me, these functions are amazing and I feel uh, it's something I should share with you all um, since I find them amazing while using them. So I will start with um, text before or text after. So let's say, for example, in Excel, you have this kind of dirty uh, test right here. This is not really dirty, just that the, they squash things together. This is name, staff ID, and department. And you want them to kind of just um, extract some kind of test from this thing. What most of us use in Excel then is whether you use a text to column or use a function in Excel called left. And even when you use left, one of the problem of left is when I use left here, I want to use left to extract. I need to specify a number of characters. Now you need to now combine another formula. Maybe you, you combine a find formula or you combine a search formula to be able to kind of um, get the names that you need. If I combine a search formula now, I can see I want to search for where there is comma. And then uh, that is when this kind of test should stop. Because if I don't specify that, when I drag down, it's not really going to be easy for this formula to identify where I want to stop. So if I do this, I'll be able to extract the name. but with the help of text before or text after, it kind of makes things easier for you. So instead of doing that um, old way of doing things, I can just say equals to text before. And um, text before is just asking for um, um, some few arguments, right? And I want to extract this text, right? What is the delimiter? Text before which delimiter? So the delimiter I want to extract is before comma, right? before comma and I can kind of select uh, an instance so which instance do I want to select it I can put a match mode I can even put if not find so what should I do right but I can kind of stop here so what this is doing is I'm extracting a text before comma so you can see this is kind of very fast compared to you doing left or you even doing a text to column and same thing for department if I want to use um, if I want to extract this department from here right now I'm going to kind of combine like three or four formulas to be able to extract L and D. If I want to use formula, I may probably use write, learn, and also find or search, right? Those three formulas to be able to extract L and D alone. Or I should just use flash field or test to column. But sometimes people really want to use formulas. They don't want to use flash field because it's just a tool and it will not change when the data set updates. So you can use test after here as well in this scenario. So you just come to your test after, you select whatever you want to do. I'll say, I want this, right? And then um, after which um, delimiter, delimiter is comma. So if you look at this um, test variable, you see I have name, comma, I have um, star ID, comma, then I have L and D. So this L and D is like the second instance of my comma because I have one comma here, I have another comma here. So what I'm going to specify my instance number right now it's going to be two, right? Because I'm saying that I want the test after the second comma. So when I close my bracket and I do enter, then you're going to see L and D. You can see that kind of fast. I'm using only one formula. If I want to achieve this in the old way, using formula, I'm going to combine three formula to be able to do the same thing, all right? So um, that is uh, the first uh, formulas I want to share with you, which is kind of interesting. So another one is called test split, right? Which I find very, very interesting. So imagine you want to split a data and just split it right there with a formula. I don't need to use a test to column or anything. I don't need to do formula one by one. If I want to achieve these three things, that means I have to use left here, I have to use mid here, and I have to use right here, right? But even all these formulas I put here, I still have to combine some things with them so that they can work effectively. Like left now, I have to combine find, mid, I have to combine learn, I have to combine search, right, I have to combine learn and search. So it's kind of very tasky, but with this one single formula, I can just split everything right there by using a function called text split in Excel. 
right? This is it here, tech split. And what are the argument of tech split? Uh, what text do you want to split this text? And what is the delimiter? I'm going to pull my delimiter is uh, a delimiter is comma, right? And uh, do you have a rule delimiter? I don't have that. Ignore empty, much more than whatever. Do I want to pad it with something? So that's another thing that I can kind of think of. So if I um, do this, I can just hit enter. And you see immediately I hit enter, I kind of split the entire test into three using a dynamic array, which kind of makes something this very, very interesting. And when I drag it down, just look at this. When I drag this down, you're going to split it for everything as well, right? So test split is kind of interesting. Um, when you're working with uh, text in Excel, it's something you should try. Another interesting formula that I see that I like using a lot is sequence, right? A lot of people don't use this sequence, but I think you should start using it because there's so many things you can achieve with this. Just see, let's say, for example, I even want to create a random um, serial number, right? I can use a sequence and say equals to sequence, just very basic, and I want you to create a, a random row, right? Now I'm using row. How many rows do you want to create? Row, right? I want you to create serial number for 10 rows. Right now, it's going to give me serial number for 10. It kind of makes sense. Another instance of how you can use sequences, you can say, okay, maybe I want you to create a serial number based on whatever whatever I type in this um, under this name, whatever I type here, that is when you should create a, a, a serial number. So I can do equals to sequence of this sequence again, and I will say counter of um, I'll just combine counter with this and say count whatever is inside here, right? And anytime I type, it kind of create a serial number for me automatically. So you see this is showing CAC right now because there's nothing here. So if I put Wally here, so I have serial number one, that is one. I put uh, Pelumi here. So it's, this is creating the serial number automatically. I put uh, Musin, I put uh, Philip here. And as I'm typing, it's, it's, it's generating a serial number automatically, which kind of Makes sense, right? Another instance where you can use a serial number is you can use it to generate a random number or you can use it to generate a random date. So if I say equals to sequence right now and I want to generate a um, number of rows, I can say, okay, I want to generate um, uh, 10 serial number in a row. Do I want to create it for a column? No, I don't want to do for column, but, but you can as well do for column. Let me even show you an example of a column. If I do two columns now, right, I want you to generate a 10 serial number within two columns. Look at how it's going to generate it. This is one, two, three, four. So just generating those numbers according to the 10 rows in two, in two columns, right? But that is not what I want. So I'm going to step the row. So I'm going, I want to generate a random number and I want the random number to start from 50, right? Start from 50 and I want to step that 50 by five. Right, which means you should be adding an additional five. I can even say 10. You should add an additional 10. You should just keep on switching the 50 by 10. So if I close the bracket and I enter right now, you can see I have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I'm stepping this 50 by 10. So I create a sequence of 10 numbers. And those 10 numbers, I start from 50 and I'm stepping it by 10. I can do the same thing for date. Let's say, for example, I want to create a, a, a random date that, that change based on seven days in a week, right? So I can say equals to sequence, right? Give me a 10 row of data, right? I'm not doing anything in column. Then start from dates. I'm going to specify and use a date formula, right? Start from 2023, uh, month is uh, maybe January. So I'll just put one here and day is one as well. So then I want you to step this by seven, which is, every seven seven days so it will change the date by seven days so if i hit enter right now okay this is not formatted so let me just um, format it yep so if you look at this um date now you can see that it is stepping it by seven seven days because you have one here then you have eight here then you have 15 here then you have 22 29 so it's stepping it by um seven seven days so sequence is kind of interesting e if you are not using it before in Excel, I think you should start using it, right? So moving on to the next uh, top four. So the four for me is the choose column. Choose column is kind of very interesting in Excel because I found out this choose column, I think some a um, couple of weeks ago, and I was very, very amazed by what this guy can do because 
one of the problem people have when using filter in Excel, the people that are used to using filter, for those that use filter very well, one of the problem we have in Excel when using filter is you want to choose columns, right? When you're, when you're using the filter function. But what some of us now do is that we now combine sequence with, uh, uh, with a filter to be able to select some appropriate columns that we need and all that. And the formula kind of look very, very big. But we choose columns. We can do a lot of things very easier because just allow you to choose some columns. Let's say, for example, these tables I have to the right, right? I have name and I have department and I have gross salary, right? But the, the columns I really need here is name and then gross salary. I don't need this department column. I just want to choose name and gross salary, right? So I'm going to use my choose column measure. I would say equals to choose columns, right? And I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to highlight the uh, entire table, which is this table. And then I'm going to put comma here. So, and I'm going to choose the columns that I want. So I want which of the columns? I want column one. Then I also want put a comma again and I want column three. So I want one and three. So I'm choosing column one and three. Once I hit enter, you see that the dynamic carry will spill this and is only choosing column one and three, right? It's leaving the department column out. Imagine me using uh, uh, this with uh, a filter. It will be very, very interesting. There's also um, choose rows as well. So you may as well want to choose rows. There's a, 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 a formula called choose rows as well. You want to choose, okay, I want to choose this row and this row and this row and this row. So, but for that, I will not, uh, it's not part of my uh, top 10. So the next formula I, I found very interesting is VStack. I was so happy when this VStack came out because a lot of people in Excel don't know how to use a uh, power query, right? They just want to do some manipulations in right there in their Excel, right? They want to do some consolidation right there in Excel. Although we have a tool in Excel called Consolidate, but the tool is kind of very old. I'm not sure a lot of people even use it. If you go to your data tab, your Consolidate is up here uh, beside your flash field, right? Your consolidate is up here beside, I think in my years of experience, I only use this consolidate once or twice, and it's even during the Power XM1 training, right? So people use uh, uh, Power Query now to consolidate stuff. But with VStack in Excel, you may want to dynamically consolidate some tables so that you can use it in your report. Imagine even use VStack plus two column and filter inside the same expression. It's going to be very, very amazing. Right. So let's say, for example, I have these two tables to the right here. I have a tables that give me the names of um, all staff and the, their department, and I have their ghost salary. Maybe this is for January, and I have another uh, table here that has the same names of staff, department, and gross salary, and this is for February. And I, I want to kind of consolidate these two tables into one because I don't want to stress myself now doing the consolidate one by one. What most people do, especially the people that don't know Excel, is they copy, they paste on that, they copy, they paste on that. So with VStack, you can kind of consolidate the table together without stress. So I can come here and say equals to VStack. VStack here. And VStack is asking for arrays. Which array did you want to consolidate, right? So I'm going to go to my array. I'll come here. I'll say I want to consolidate this guy, right? This is the first array, comma, and then this is the second array. I want to VStack these two array. Then I'm going to close my bracket and hit enter. Once I do that, you see that it has consolidated the arrays for me. Now I have one single table. I have one single table, which very interesting, right? Another example I can use for VStack is, let's say, for example, you have a table like this. I have a sheet that has um, different, uh, tables. So this is, you know, people that has this January, February, March, different tables, right? This is just salary of people, right? But it's in different sheets, right? And in, in different table. Can even be here, 211, 212, and all that. And I want to consolidate all these tables into one consolidated file without using Power Query. I just want to consolidate them here. So I can kind of consolidate it by selecting the array one by one, the way I did in the first example. But I can also name the array, right? For those that are used to naming in Excel, when you name the array like this, right? I'm just going to highlight it and you go to your name uh, box here and you name it. So I have these array names as Chan. So when I'm using my VStack, it's kind of very easy. So I can come to here and say equals to VStack. I just want to consolidate January to uh, December and I will type Jan, then comma Feb, 
uh, these are the things I'm, I'm, I'm um, consolidating March, April, May, June, July, July, then August, and then uh, September and October and then December. So by doing this, I have put all these 12 sheets, right? Inside one single sheet, right? I've consolidated it. And when I hit enter now, it's going to consolidate everything, which is from January up to December. If I scroll down now, you will see this as uh, January data, February, April. So everything is kind of here. So imagine me also want to do a report and I want to use this VStack as an anchor inside my filter function. It's, it's going to be very amazing. Right, so that's an example of how you can use VStack. Now, I also have HStack as well. HStack is kind of um, similar to uh, VStack. So VStack is vertical stack and this is horizontal stack. So let's say I have um, something like this that I want to work on. I have months like this. I have a list of my month and I want to split this month into 2011 and um, 2012. And I have a table right here that I have the year and the month. Right. So instead of me using pivot table or whatever, I can dynamically use the H stack here to do this. I'll just say H stack of what is my first array. My first array is the 2011 array. I will stop here and then put comma and start from uh, 2012. That's the second array, which is the number that I want to pull. All right. That's my second array. And I'm going to close my bracket. So once I do this, it's going to spill the 2011 and the 2012 into two different columns, right? Which is interesting for each stack. So that's an example of um, another interesting formula that I have. This is my top six. Now for top seven, top seven is kind of interesting for me because it just kind of make cleaning easier in Excel and working with um, the text easier in Excel. So this is called two call and two row. So Imagine you want to put all this list of names into a, a column. So I have different departments, right? I have the operation department. These are the people in operation. I have the sales department. These are the people in sales. I have the marketing department. So these three departments are kind of one department. This is like staff names of everybody in Libra. Now, I want to consolidate these three guys. So instead of me doing copy and paste, I just copy this, paste it on that, copy this, paste it on that. What if I have uh, like 15 or 16 like that? Copy and paste may not really work well for me. So I can just do a formula called to column, right? I'm putting everything into a column. So that's called to call. So once I do to call, I will highlight the names, right? Which is the names of all the things I want to put into a columns, right? Then I'm going to hit enter. Once I do that, to put everything inside one column, when you scroll down now, you will see I have everything, but I still have this zero, zero, zero here. So this zero here is just some blanks that I have here. So I can actually do that in the formula as well. Inside the formula, when you put a comma, it will tell you, do you want to ignore something? That is the ignore uh, arguments. Do you want to keep all value default? Do you want to ignore blanks? Do you want to ignore errors? Do you want to ignore blank and error? So I will pick three instead to say, ignore all blanks. An error. So when I close my bracket and enter to give me the list, and right now I don't have all those zeros again. So I just have the list of all the stuff right here, which makes a lot of sense. Now, the example of the second formula, which is to row, is maybe probably I want to convert a columns to row. So look at this department. Let's say this department, for example, I want to change it into um, a row. Right, something like I want to transpose it in Excel. So I can do equals to two row, equals to two row, then I'm going to select my array. So I want to put this department into rows. Once I close my bracket and I hit enter, then it goes to split this into rows. Look at that. I'm going to split this into rows, which is kind of amazing. So when you're building reporting Excel, things, it's make things easier. Now my top eight, right is um tick 
take is kind of very interesting too. I like that. I've been trying to think of how I can get a use case for this. And when do I use a take, right? So let, let's say I have a list of tables somewhere, and then I want to do like something like a, a, a pool to take only the top five first, or to take only the top 10 first, or to take only the first five. So th that is what take does. So you have a list of tables, you have a list of rows inside your table, and you want take to just take maybe five out of it, or take the first 10 out of it, or take the first 20 out of it. So you can kind of use that to kind of minimize the kind of data that you have as well. Maybe do a top five. So I can say equals to take, right? And what do I want to take? I want to take, uh, uh, this is the array, right? I'm going to select the array and put a comma. So what uh, do I want to, um, take i want to take the rows not columns right i can kind of take columns as well so but i want to take rows and i want to take top five right once i close my bracket and i hit enter you see it takes only the first five for me it takes only the first five kind of makes sense you can do top 10 you can do top two just take the two and all that another reverse of this formula is something called drop which is the top nine for me so drop also makes sense drop also just means that out of these columns right just the reverse of this one out of this uh this table which one do, do you want to drop i can see i want to drop the first 10 just remove the first 10 and give me the remaining one or i can see i want to drop the first 11 and give me the remaining one so it depends on on you right or whatever you want to drop. So if I want to give an example of that, I'll just say equals to drop, drop, and I'm going to select my array, which is this table um, up here, this table here, and I'll put a comma and say, what am I dropping? I'm dropping the first 10 row. So give me whatever remains. So you can see I've dropped the first 10 row and it give me the remaining one, which is just four, four rows inside my table. So this formula, dynamic array formula is amazing. That's my top nine. Now, my top 10 is the filter functions, right? A lot of people have been using filter uh, functions, but for me, I just I just love using the filter functions, right? So I think it should be part of my top 10. Even if uh, uh, I have so many formulas, I just limit it into 10. Now, for people that are new to filter functions, filter functions in Excel kind of help you to filter a table or curate some dynamic report in Excel without the need of using pivot table and maybe some other formulas in Excel. So let's say I have this table right here. This table has the list of names, the staff code, the department, and glossary. And I want to do a filter that, that filter this by department and also filtered it by maybe when salary is less than or greater than something. So I can do a simple filter here and say equals to filter, right? What is my array? This is my array. The table called table one is my array. Now, what do I want to include inside this uh, filter? So I want to include um, department when department is equals to uh, maybe whatever I type up here. So look at this department here department is equals to this i'm going to close my bracket and then before i even close my bracket if i put a comma there's an if empty what if i cannot find any department you put here then i can put a condition that say just put not found right here right and i hit enter so these filters only show me the department that are here if i put uh, l and d right here l and d filter only showing me the department related to l and d let me put operation and let's see if operation is found so you can see there's no department that operation, so it's showing not found, right? Which makes sense. So let me type marketing back right here. Now I can have another condition that says only show me the marketing when the salary is greater than one million. And if you look at this marketing here, there's only one person that has a, a, a salary a salary of one million, right? So there's only two people who have salary of like three million. So let's say I want to see the people that their salary is above one million or above 2 million, then I only see these two people. Then I'm going to amend my formula. So inside my formula, I can say, look at this. I can have two conditions. So one of the issues that people have is in Power BI, ah, I said in Power BI, sorry. In Excel, the include argument is only showing is only, only showing one. So where will I add the second arguments that says when the salary is greater than uh, uh, 1 million? 
right? So there's a trick to do that. And how to do that is you put the first argument into a bracket. That's the first trick. You put the first argument into a bracket and you put multiplication sign to say, you know, usually in Excel it's supposed to be unsigned or maybe all signed, right? But filter functions kind of work well when you put the multiplication sign. And you put the second argument into a bracket as well, into a bracket. So I'm going to say when salary, so now select the salary uh, column, when salary is uh, greater than, maybe greater than whatever I type here, right? Greater than whatever I type here. That is my second um, argument right here. So I put those two into a bracket and I'm going to put comma and say not found as well in case um, you didn't find anything that, that is close to that. So close my bracket and then let's hit uh, enter. Okay, so I think I'm missing a, yeah, I think I'm missing a bracket here. So table, okay, department. So um, my department is um, equals to this. When my department is equals to this, multiply by when gross salary is uh, greater than um, um, uh, whatever I put here. So if I come here and I type two million right now, I'm sure you know it's going to fit it into only three, only two. So you see, there's only two. Let me type L and D department. Did L and D department have anybody that had a salary of um, above two million? Yes, it's only one person, right? What of above one million? So there are two people that that, that are hand above one million. So what of another department like uh, sales? Do they have anybody above one million? Yes. So that is me just using filters to just check different things. I can check admin department. How is admin department doing? Do they have anybody above uh, uh, two million? Not fun. So there's nobody that hands above two million there in the admin department. So this is me just kind of doing a short report with filter functions. Now, let's try and see how we can combine filter functions and uh, choose call together. So let's say, for example, I just want to return only the name and gross salary. I don't want to report return everything. I don't want to report name, uh, staff uh, ID department and then gross salary. I only want to do a filter for name and um, gross salary. So my formula is, is going to be very similar to what I have up here, right? But I'm just going to add choose call to it. So here I'm going to say equals to filter, equals to filter. I want you to choose call. Right, choose column. What array did you want to work with? This is my array here. So I'll select um, uh, this table. Right, this table is my array. And then right here, I'm going to put a comma and I'll say, which column did you want to pick? So I want to pick column name and the gross salary. That's column one and column four. So I'll put one comma four, one comma four. Then I'll close my choose call a bracket. So that's my array, right? Then I'm going to do a comma and say when my department, when department is equals to whatever I type up there. So when department is equals to um, whatever I put here, which is add me, right? I'm going to close my bracket and hit enter. Now look at this. So this is only showing me names and gross salary now with the app of choose call. Because I've choose columns that I need. I said I only need two columns. Try it. Now, the people in the department that I selected up here are Excel and Yahoo and Loladi from Lion. So if I put another department here, marketing, um, marketing, then you see the people here in marketing. These are just Adiliki, Samson, and then um, Bimiliki Shego. Right? So this is my top 10 uh, Excel formulas I feel that should shared with you.